Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Thanks for uh, being here all afternoon. Uh, so today, um, we're here to talk about the Gateway API. This is kind of like the new Kubernetes ingress, trying to unify load balancing and network configs. Um, I'm Susan Wu, I'm in uh, Google Cloud, I'm in outbound product management. So outbound product management at Google is, uh, uh, we, we're not building the inbound product, but we're talking to customers to get the requirements and then we prioritize the product features. So I actually am in cloud networking. My colleague, uh, we work together on the slides, uh, Pierre Louis, you might have seen him speak in uh, KubeCon, he's the PM for uh, GKE Gateway Controller. So that today we'll, we'll talk about like um, the Gateway API, the open source project, as well as the, um, the Gateway Controller, the um, use cases, and then I'll talk about something that's actually from Google, the multi-cluster gateway and the multi-cluster services. And then uh, I'll cover at the end the gateway security, how to implement something like that. So starting with the gateway API, uh, for those who've been in Kubernetes for some time, there's always been this ingress API. It's been there for five years. It's quite good, right? It did all the normal things like host and uh, path matching. It did all of the HTTPS routing and HTTPS traffic. So you could get HTTPS uh, routing from outside the cluster into the services inside the cluster. And it's pretty stable. It's been around for like five years and I just checked last night, I, I saw like 22 implementations. Uh, so it's been out there for quite some time. Uh, what's different is there were a lot of advanced use cases and that led to a lot of people doing custom in, in you know, custom implementations, so it led to a lot of cons consistencies. So just looking at the picture, right? So looking at the service owners, so that could be your dev or dev team. Oh, something is wrong with this. <laughs> but anyway, it could be your dev team, it could be your service owners. Then they implement their own ingress. Then within an organization, then you have all of these. You have proliferation of ingress. Then you have proliferation of annotations to do all these custom things. So uh, that was a little bit of a problem. So with the varying uh, implementations, you could even have different methods for timeouts, different ways of rewriting to targets, and it's it just kind of like what other people always says, like wow, wow, west. And so what happened is uh, the proliferation of annotations, the group uh, that were involved with the uh, Kubernetes SIG got together and started working on something like this a couple of years back. And the other thing that was uh, a limitation on the ingress is uh, it wasn't good for sharing roles. So you might have uh, in Kubernetes, somebody might be the platform admin, somebody might be the infrastructure operator, somebody might be the dev or service owners. The ingress didn't have those different roles. And so it was kind of like throwing everybody into like a kitchen sink. And so this all, this all came about um, a couple of years ago, and now we can say that the Gateway API is already graduated to beta July 2022. And in Google, we already have the Gateway Controller, which is the implementation of it. Uh, we had it uh, GA uh, in, for a single cluster as of last KubeCon in December. So what is this Gateway API open source, right? It's just a modern set of APIs for layer four and layer seven load balancing. It helps you with the routing in Kubernetes. So as I mentioned before, it has the, the ingress was lack of, didn't have the way to express the roles. And in this gateway, there's the way of uh, providing that role orientation, right? So there could be resources that model uh, these organizational roles, right, that actually use and configure Kubernetes. So it could be a platform admin, it could be a dev team or service owners. Um, and the, another advantage of this is it's really portable. And now this is not a big improvement, right? Portability, sorry, there's some kind of background. Anyway, maybe I'm moving too much. Uh, so this is uh, not necessarily a big improvement, but it, things should stay the same, right? So with Ingress, it was a universal uh, specification. There were a lot of... Um, oh, okay, sorry. Okay, is that a little bit better? Because it's horrible. Okay, all right. 
so the, the, there were, um, can you hear me? Okay. Um, so it was a universal um, uh, specification, uh, but there were just too many implementations and there was too many inconsistencies, as I mentioned earlier. And the gateway API is designed to be that portable specification and is supported by many, many implementations. So you can see all of them, uh, you know, Google for sure, and even AWS has an implementation there. And, uh, oh, sorry. It's meant to be uh, expressive, right? It supports all these core functionality. Um, for things like header matching, you know, tra weighting the traffic, and other capabilities that other, uh, that traditionally ingress was made only possible, but with custom uh, annotation. And I'll show you which ones were possible with ingress and which ones are uh, only available in the gateway API. And then this is extensible. It allows for all this custom resources. Uh, to be linked to these different layers of the API. So it makes it possible for very granular customization and with all of the right places using that API. So let me uh, talk you to you about how we evolved into the Gateway API. So there are some components of the Gateway API and these are uh, outlined here. As I mentioned, they map to the different organizational roles, right? So the Gateway class it's very similar to the ingress class. And the ingress class was exposing HTTP, HTTPS routes from outside the cluster to the services within the cluster. And this traffic uh, routing was uh, kind of controlled by the rules, right? Defined you know, at the ingress resource. And so in that regard, gateway is actually very similar to ingress. But where it's different is you can now see that you have different roles and you can define the different things. So the platform provider, uh, in the case maybe you know Google, et cetera, uh, we would define that gateway class. And then the platform uh, admin is defining the gateway and that, and then they can determine the policies for the whole deployment and then delegate uh, these, uh, uh, the, this uh, control to the service owner, like the individual dev teams, and the individual dev teams can now define their routes and services and the policies for their own namespace. So that is the difference, right? So then what happens is uh, the platform admin uh, defines the global policies, and then the dev team and service owners can define their cluster level policies. So that gives it a lot more consistency across the organization. Uh, let me go a little further on this role orientation. So these APIs are mapping to the roles as I explained. And uh, so from the infrastructure, starting the infrastructure provider, which in the case would be Google, uh, we would define that gateway class and we would be able to sh provide that shared uh, configuration and behavior for say the TCP and UDP, the layer four low balancer, or the layer seven uh, low balancer for the Kubernetes cluster. And then each of these gateway classes is uh, controlled by like a single controller. Though uh, a controller can actually handle more than one gateway class. And then the platform admin is the cluster operator and they would define the Kubernetes, uh, sorry, the gateway and how this shared resource could be used by different dev teams. So you can see uh, the dev team for store, they control their own namespace and their policies and the team for site, they have their own uh, policies and they can control their own namespace. Uh, so just do a quick review on ingress, right? As I mentioned earlier, it's very similar to ingress. But what it is, is think of ingress as a subset of the features. And now gateway opens up the superset of the features that you can do. In the past, you might have been able to do some of these with ingress, but you would have to do custom, like uh, the traffic splitting and all those you would have to customize. But in this case now, this is the superset. So let me tell you about one example of that cross namespace uh, gateway. 
So using the example of uh, cross namespace routing, so the, again, this is something that is only in the gateway API, not in the ingress. So you imagine the two teams, right? So there's a team for site, there's a team for store, and the site team at the top actually have two apps. They have uh, both like a login app and a home app, and they're both in the same namespace. And the other team has uh, the team store, they have an app called store app, and they have their own um, namespace. So the company itself for all this is, just use example, foo.example.com, so they all work in the same company. And another thing to note is the security team. They have access to create uh, and control all the certificates uh, centrally for that shared gateway resource. And then so we're showing the shared gateway resource and it's now being able to route to these two namespaces. This is kind of useful, right? Because the platform admin is controlling that resource kind of centrally and now could delegate all these resources to all these different namespaces and to, to these different dev teams. So this means that uh, somebody can have kind of centralized control, but yet actually segment the control to the teams that actually use it. So that actually um, can minimize the access and also maybe uh, isolate the fault domains. Uh, let me show you this example with the traffic splitting. So in, uh, in Ingress, this is possible, but again, with a lot of customization. So with, Ingress, with uh, Gateway API, it's easy to kind of specify the weights. So I put the code there. So you can specify, say, you know, maybe, uh, you know, 90% of the traffic goes to one release, you know, say store one, and maybe 10% of the traffic goes to release two, store two. So this is a good way to split the traffic. And then you can see it's very easy to uh, add that in, uh, and use the API there. You can see, I don't know if you can see it's kind of small, but I, I put in the traffic splitting and the weight. And another example is maybe like canary deployment. So um, in the Google exp uh, sense, we can match with the, the, head, uh, the rule here. So we can match that header. And so we match exact. So I put in canary. So in this case, um, the service owner can use this gateway API. You could separate the traffic, right? So between maybe like production, and then you have a canary release, and then you keep testing, and then you direct small amount of traffic to the canary, and then maybe once the canary passes, then you direct all the traffic there. But in this case, the Gateway API actually could match that header. So I have it in yellow there for you. And uh, this is not possible in Ingress without a lot of customization. And then using this example now is uh, we want to talk about kind of like the Google perspective, switching gears. Earlier I talked a lot about the open source. So Google's been involved with the Gateway API for quite some time. We actually have a lot of engineers contribute to it. And I'm in product management, so I actually support the GKE, Gateway Controller product that, that's uh, uh, based on the API. But the vision actually is to make it easier for um, you know, developers to go from code to production, right? So it's very easy, you could see, to go from, say, Google Cloud to have this production-ready system. And then uh, you could also use other uh, technologies from Google Cloud, like Cloud Run, which makes it easier for you to um, run your uh, stateless containers. And Cloud Run does a lot of automation, so it makes it easy to run your stateless containers without having to do, you know, provision machines or clusters or auto scaling. And so this is, a, uh, this approach makes it very easy to have governance across the organization. I was saying that the platform admin could set up that shared gateway, then delegate the services to the dev teams that own their own namespace. Uh, and then this is, a, so then if you're your own app owner, you actually can now control all of your uh, routing, your DNS policies, and your certificate, actually, for your own namespace. And then uh, you can also implement some uh, auto-scaling and capacity management. I'll show you that in an upcoming slide, how that's done. 
Uh, so this is uh, uh, the product I work on. <laughs> so this is a uh, GKE uh, gateway controller, but recall in my earlier slides, there's a, like about a, you know like 20 implementation you can, can choose. But if you are using uh, GKE, uh, you can use this gateway controller that comes with uh, GKE. You have to, uh, some, there's some setup, but, but it's quite easy to get this going. So this is the implementation of the gateway API. We call that the GKE gateway controller. So there's two versions of this actually. There's something for a single cluster, and then there's uh, some for multi-cluster. Uh, for single cluster, I mentioned is GA already as of December uh, 2022, and the multi cluster is in preview status. Um, so the uh, we talked a lot about the different features, you know, matching the HTTP, uh, supporting the host path, and and now adding additional use cases like. Uh, you know, weight-based traffic splitting, uh, traffic mirroring. And then I'll tell you, I'll switch gears and talk about multi-cluster, uh, actually. And then there's, it comes with integration with other solutions from Google, which is like Cloud Armor, which is the web application firewall, and it stops a lot of distributed denial of service attacks. And it's also integrated with the Cloud Load Balancer and also Certificate Manager. So just taking this a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit more granularity. So remember uh, the different API sets. So the first one is the gateway class. So this comes from the infrastructure provider. In this case, I work at Google, so I'm going to talk about Google Cloud. So then you can define the different load balancer types, and it could be the layer four load balancer or the layer seven load balancer, and um, in this case, I'll show you. Um, so this is uh, mapped to the layer seven low balancers from Google. And if you're using the multi-cluster, it's mapped to the MC, the layer seven low balancers uh, for multi-cluster. And so if you could see here, um, the gateway class, and it's mapped to that gateway, um, the class name matches the name of the GKE global external low balancer. So let me switch gears to the multi-cluster, right? So a lot of times uh, people are running multiple clusters and so they wanna low balance traffic across multiple Kubernetes clusters. This is a little bit similar to the multi-cluster ingress, but now in implemented in the gateway API. So as I mentioned, it support both the regional and the global load balancer. And it's uh, integrated with something called the multi-cluster service. I'll tell you a little bit about that uh, in the next slide. So this uh, does, this gateway uh, classes deploy the multi-cluster uh, gateway and that handles all the routing, traffic splitting, traffic mirroring, uh, health-based failover across different Kubernetes clusters, across different Kubernetes namespaces, and across the region. And so why, why do you need this multi-cluster uh, gateway? So these are some of the popular use cases that we saw. So for example, you might have low balancing across maybe two GKE clusters, and then you're just testing traffic, so you're sending some uh, synthetic test traffic, and you send it to the secondary cluster, so that might be one use case for this. And then another time, so you might be mirroring the uh, cl uh, traffic to the canary cluster. So that's another use for the, for the external multi-cluster gateway. And, and another third popular use case might be you have some weight, like my other example, uh, you put a weight and you traffic split based on the weights, and then you mirror that across um, you know, multi-GKE uh, uh, clusters. Uh, so now that you have set something set up like this, then it makes a lot of sense to figure out how to auto scale. So right before I came in, there was a gentleman talking about horizontal auto scaling. And so this is kind of uh, very, uh, this is now built into this environment, right? So you, you might have uh, low balancing, you know, and depending on the health, so let's say that first cluster, it's sort of turned red, meaning there's a lot of traffic coming in. Then there are two ways in, in uh, GKE to actually solve that. 
So in the middle, we have something called auto scaling, very similar to what the gentleman was talking about. And so this is tightly integrated to the Kubernetes auto scaling that he was talking about. That auto scaling is in a single cluster. But what if you actually need to get more capacity, right? So we actually have another approach, which is a capacity management. And this is integrated at the cloud load balancer. So you can see the top there. It's integrated with the cloud load balancer, which monitors the global use of all these services. Then you can actually instantiate more backends. So a little bit different from the other example, the, from the other session of, of auto scaling within the cluster. Now I'm actually getting more backends, so you can see that. And uh, that actually would give even more capacity if your application needs that, or your application is demanding more performance. So we actually have both approaches. Uh, let me skip to something different here. Uh, so uh, uh, this is called multi-cluster uh, services, is in GKE. So the service object inside of Kubernetes lets you discover and access services, but it's within one single cluster. And then you might have applications that you want to split across multiple clusters. And, and you still have to address the state and the scalability and the, the data, data sovereignty, because you, even though you split it across multiple clusters. So we uh, developed something uh, called multi-cluster service. This is in GKE. Then now with that, you could build Kubernetes applications across multiple clusters. And this actually defines some new but open APIs in Kubernetes. And it could uh, let you produce and consume you know, these services at the selected uh, endpoints across the Kubernetes cluster. And so it's, it still uses the very familiar service object, but these services that it's enabled by this multi-cluster service, it can still be discovered and accessed across the service, um, across the clusters with the virtual IP. And so this matches the same behavior that you normally see in cluster IP uh, service for a single cluster. So this is a Google implementation but it's just like your existing service. But now you have it for multiple clusters. And this uh, very community driven is using open APIs. And this is actually the foundation of how we handle multi-cluster networking. So you find this uh, used in our gateway, you find it in use in our services, and even in the service mesh product for multi-networking. So now I talked about that multi-cluster gateway and the multi-cluster service, the two of them working combined actually can let you manage of all these aspects of service deployment and traffic routing, but with the same single control plane. So that's the beauty of the two working together. Um, let me switch to security a little bit. So remember, this is all very role-based, right? So even the security model is also role-based. So you might have the platform admin handling all of the certificates and then uh, providing the access to say the dev team or the service owners, dedicated, delegating that access to them. So in this example, I'm showing uh, using the Google Certificate Manager. Uh, the beauty of the Google Certificate Manager is de it's deployed at the edge. So our edge load balancers uh, support um, UDP, TCP, and HTTP, and HTTPS. So what happens is when it's at the edge, actually can support millions of certificates. And so that's why that's uh, very, very scalable. And some customers have chosen the certificate manager for the high scalability. Uh, other uh, types of uh, providers might use regional load balancers for HTTPS and then maybe TCP and UDP, they may be global. And so in that case, maybe they cannot support as many uh, certificates. And then another thing that's happening is uh, how does this handle like the service and the security? So think of that gateway as like the front end of a load balancer, like right here, you can see. And then so you can secure it with authentication and encryption for the gateways. So how this happens is from the client to the gateway, the traffic that's originally from the client, it terminates at the gateway. 
But for gateway to service, the traffic is originating at gateway and it terminates at the back end pods. And then when you're within the cluster, service to service, communication and encryption that can be handled by mesh technologies. And so I talked a little bit about the certificate manager. So this is uh, able to be deployed alongside the cloud low balancer, as you can see here. So that's how we address the kind of the security aspects of this. And then uh, lastly, um, this is uh, still happening. A lot of things are happening. So feel free to join the community. You could maybe scan. So there are meetings. Um, and then there's another group that's a subset of the Gateway SIG. They form a smaller group, and they're using the Gateway API for service mesh use cases. So I think the meetings are every Tuesday rotating between 3, a.m., 3 p.m. and 8 a.m., I think, in the morning. So if you're curious about something like this and being applied to service mesh use cases, you can join that community. Um, and that is uh, what I have. Any other questions? Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, actually, quick question. How many folks are using Ingress right now today? Oh, almost everyone. <laughs> um, so then the question is, should you switch? I get that a lot. Um, so I think it's, uh, uh, as I mentioned, Ingress is stable. There are like 22 implementations. It's been there five years. It's, I think, if you... Uh, are considering is only the advanced cases if you're doing a lot of customization or an, a lot of annotation, or you want that, um, uh, you want to have a centralized management and then delegate to the dev teams. This is worth looking into. Um, that's any uh, show of hands, what type of ingress are you using? Anybody like shout out just to get curious? Is there, okay, yeah. Nginx, yeah, I, I hear that a lot. Well, thanks, yeah. Yeah, any, what was, what were you using? Nginx, okay, yeah, very cool. So yeah, feel free if you want to test our stuff out. We, we have uh, trials, so thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. We do have, are you able to take a few more questions if people oh, have them? Yeah, sure, I don't know the timing actually. We have, we have plenty of time. Oh, okay, were there questions? Yep. My question my question would be, that, do you have a Helm chart or Helm file? Do we have a Helm chart for well, GKE controller? Yeah, it's only, G, it's only in your cloud, right? Yeah, so we actually have a way to install the CRD. Uh, I could get your name and show, show you where it is. It's actually not too hard to install the CRD. I didn't do the demo today because it takes like 10 minutes to set up, to set up the CRD, then you need a little additional time to set up the low balancer. So I didn't want to be like waiting here. <laughs> but yeah, I can send you the CRD. Any other questions? Yeah, I'm wondering if this interacts with a load balancer. You know, if you're in a public cloud, typically they kind of made the choice of load balancer yeah, for so you. I did but if you're on-prem, oh. you're likely to have stood up your own. And mm. if you tried to do this along with it, would that have some interaction level? Yeah, so actually, if you, when you look in the community, there are actually a lot of uh, load balancer implementations. So uh, folks are able to use their, their own, actually. Uh, so I, I think it generally uh, there, um, let's see, what's another? Oh, Contour is an example. So somebody could have used Contour. Uh, so VMware, I think, led the project for Contour but donated CNCF. So Contour could be an example. Any other questions? All right. Oh, okay. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, it's almost the end of the day. I'm so really happy. I was thinking folks might be <laughs> heading to beers. So thank you. Thank you for being such a good crowd.